In this video, we're looking at the top 10 Power Query tips that everybody should know. Now, this isn't the type of video where the first tips are really good and then the tips at the end are rubbish. If you're a Power Query user in Excel, this is the stuff you need to know. So make sure you watch to the end because you don't wanna miss out on something that could save you a lot of time and hassle. So if you're ready, let's get started. In Power Query, when we click the close and load button, it loads a table to the worksheet by default. And if we want any other options, we need to go to close and load too. Now, here's the thing. As we progress through our Power Query journey, we soon discover that a connection only query is probably the most likely one that we're going to use. So wouldn't it make more sense for that to be our default close and load button? To do that, all we need to do is in Power Query, go to File, Options and Settings, and then Query Options. Then in the Data Load section of the Query Options, we want to check the Specify the Default Load Settings, but not select any of those options. And then we can click OK. And that's it. Our queries will now load as connection only by default. So you've built your query and you've loaded it into whatever destination you want, whether it's a table or a pivot table or the data model or whatever you like. You then realize that you should have loaded it to somewhere else. So you go back into Power Query and you go to the Close and Load options and find out that Close and Load 2 is grayed out. It seems like we can't load it anywhere else. The truth is we can, but we can't do it through Power Query. Instead, we need to do this inside Excel. So in the Data ribbon, we open the Queries and Connections pane. We then right click on the query and select Load 2. This now gives us all the load locations that we had before. So we can now load our query to another destination. This is an important one. You might not realize it, but Power Query uses bankers rounding by default. That means that a five is always rounded to the nearest even number. So that means 1.5, is rounded up to two, but 2.5 is rounded down to two. This stops the bias from rounding, but it doesn't always give us the result that we expect. So if we want to round the numbers so that we get the same result as Excel's round function, what we need to do is to apply the round transformation to the relevant number of decimal places. We then need to go in and edit the M code and include an additional argument of rounding mode dot away from zero. And that now rounds the number in the same way as Excel's round function. Some transformations in Power Query automatically add steps with new names. For example, if we use unpivot, it will add an attribute and a value column. Sure, we can double click and rename that column, but there's a better way. Rather than adding a step to rename the column, we can simply change the text in the M code. All we need to do is to change the column name, which Power Query created by default. And by using this method, it means we get to save a step in our query. Don't you hate it when Power Query automatically applies the changed type step on some transformations? Even though we didn't ask for it, it's there. And it seems like we're always deleting the changed type step. Well, the good news is that we can change a setting inside Power Query so that it never applies that setting for us. We can take back control and apply it when we want it. So in Power Query, we go to File, Options and Settings, and then Query Options. In the data load section of the query options pane, we want to change the type detection setting to never detect column types and headers for unstructured sources. And then we can click OK. That one change has saved us a huge amount of hassle because Power Query is no longer going to apply that change type step automatically, which means we've now taken back control and we can apply it when we want to. Have you ever returned to a query days, weeks, or months later and had no idea what you did or why you undertook those steps in that order? Well, why not do future you a favor next time and start documenting your steps as you go? There's two ways that we can do this. The first is to rename the steps. Simply right click on a step, select rename, and then enter a new step name that describes what that step is doing. Or if you need to go further, you can right click on the step and go to properties. Then we can add a description for that step. Once we've done that, we'll get a small information symbol hovering over that provides the comments about that step. Yes, it might take some additional work at the start, but believe me, future you will thank you for it because when you come back to that query, you'll actually know what you did and why you did it. In Power Query, have you ever had an error that you fixed but for some reason, that small colored bar at the top still shows that you have an error. Now, before you go looking for that error, I want you to do this one thing. I want you to click away on another step and then click back 
to the same step that you had selected before. Now there's a good chance that your error will disappear. It was never there to start with. We just needed the user interface to update. If you connect to a folder, Power Query will show all the files in that folder, but also all the files in the subfolder. Depending on what level you're connecting to, this could be a lot of files and it could be really, really slow. But thankfully, there's a better way. In Power Query, we just need to make a small tweak to the M code. Rather than folder.files, we change it to folder.contents. Now Power Query is connecting to the folder, but doesn't show any subfolders. Then if necessary, we can drill down into each of those subfolders and get to the files that we want. So this is much more efficient than connecting to a folder and all of those subfolders. If you've loaded your data to a table and then used your table as the source for a pivot table, you'll know the pain of the double refresh. The first refresh to update the table and then the second refresh to update the pivot table. The truth is you don't need to do this. We can do it all with a single refresh. Right click on the query in the queries and connections pane and then select properties. Then uncheck the enable background refresh option and click OK. Now when you refresh, everything runs in order. First, your query updates and then your pivot table updates, but it's all based on a single refresh. Let's suggest that you've created a query that would be really useful in another workbook. Now you don't need to build that query again from scratch in that workbook. Instead, we can just copy and paste the query between those workbooks. All we need to do is click on the query in the queries and connections pane and copy it. Then in the other workbook, we go to the queries and connections pane and we paste that query. And the great news is that any preceding queries in that query chain will also be copied. So now we can go in and edit that query for any tweaks that we might need to make. And that's it. They are the 10 Power Query tips that every user should know. Now go ahead and give yourself a score out of 10 for how many you already knew and then let me know in the comments. On this channel, we cover the key information so that you can use Excel efficiently, automate your work and go home on time. So why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And now, if you want another Power Query video, that's the place to go. That's got more advanced tips and tricks to take your skills to the next level.